welcome back, Pokemon trainers. Professor Chaz here, the Lab Coat's on back order, and it's time for episode number 68, I believe, of our Pokemon Sapphire playthrough. It better be 68 this time. I think last Sunday I said it was 68, it was 66, but you probably noticed that in the thumbnail and how it was very inconsistent with what I said in the video, but I'm pretty sure this is number 68. So in yesterday's episode, we did start taking on the Battle Tower Challenge, just to see how far we can get into it, and I'm surprised. I already made it to trainer number 7, and there's not really that much of a difficulty just yet. But I remember the way this works. You go through seven trainers at a time, and by completing seven, you can then go to a higher rank of seven more trainers. I'm pretty sure you have to complete 50 battles overall to get the uh, ribbon for completing the challenge, and that is kind of difficult. I believe the way it works is, based on the uh, multiplication of seven, you'll be able to defeat 49 trainers. Once you beat the 50th trainer, you earn the ribbon if you complete those seven trainers, and that is difficult. I don't I can't remember if you get the ribbon just by beating trainer number 50 and you can lose on a pre or a following one. I don't know. Let's just see how far we can go because the luck was really on our side in the last episode. But we're not that far in a battle tower just yet. We're going to be getting there at some point. We've been waiting for you. Before entering a battle room, your progress will be saved. All right. So we're using, as you can see on the layout, Zapdos, Articuno, and Rocky the Sandslash. Now to see what trainer number 7 has to offer us. And hopefully I'm completely wrong and we're just going to beat this trainer to earn the ribbon. A strong girl wants tough Pokemon. So there's going to be a lot of just random battles going on here. Not much to talk about other than what's on screen, but I should probably focus a decent amount to make sure I don't mess up. Can't really mess up against a shifter using Articuno. Ice Beam is the way to go. We are faster. But since there's going to be a lot of downtime of just going through these battles, I guess I'll probably keep doing the Battle Tower until either you folks get bored of it and just let me know in the comments if you want to see me do something different, or if and when I get defeated which is probably going to happen at some point as well. Let's go with a Mud Slap, super effective. Surf me up, I got nice defenses. That's not bad. But as I'm doing some of these random battles, I'll just say yesterday was a pretty cool day at the Pokemon League that I professor at, at Heroes Beacon here in my hometown. And we had, oh, that's gonna hurt a little bit. But we had just a casual day instead of having an official tournament. Two weeks ago, we had the pre-release for Sun and Moon. Two weeks before that, we had our first League Cup, League Challenge. What is it? League Cup, yeah. I'm still kind of mixed up on the name, but... Yeah, League Challenges are the standard things. League Cup is the, the bigger one. Anyway, we had our League Cup and then, of course, a pre-release. So we thought, you know, we're just going to have a nice laid-back, just a day to hang out with everybody. And that meant I got to actually take part in some battles myself. Because normally I stand back and just do the judging and helping out the newer players and such, doing like the learn-to-play. How can we deal with this Lantern? I'm going to say Rocky has a chance. You still have Dig, don't you? You do. And thanks to all those Mud Slaps, we do avoid that surf, otherwise we would have lost Rocky right there. But for the first time in a while, I get to sit down and play some matches with people, and I'm just going to say, I really like Mega Beedrill EX. I'm still not technically complete with that deck. I need one more Octillery to recreate the deck that I have online. Oh, we're not done yet? I thought that was your last one. Linoon comes in next. Let's throw up a Sandstorm. As you go for a Dig, all right, so next turn, since you're faster than me, I'm going to go for a rock slide, just to get some damage off, and I'll try dig as you dig and see if we can meet underground halfway. All right, let's go for the rock slide. But, yeah, the, uh, the Mega Beedrill is really awesome, and I was watching one person play. He was using this, the, the nice and reliable Ariados with Poisonous Nest and Sceptile EX with the Unseen Claw combo. You don't know how that works. I said I was going to dig, didn't I? But good thing I didn't because now we can land a rock slide and not flinch. Now let's go for the dig. But uh, it's a very good combo. The Sceptile EX has an attack for just two energy, one grass, one colorless. It says if the well, it does 60 damage, but if the opponent has a special special if the opponent has a special condition, I got to slow my words down, then you do 70 more damage with the unseen claw. No, this is a mistake. They could just dig now and avoid my attack. Oops. But the combo is, with Ariados on your bench, the Poisonous Nest ability says you can poison both active Pokemon, except for Grass-type Pokemon. Now, what kind of works well with me is, of course, Mega Beedrill EX is a Grass-type. So they cannot get the poison on my good old Mega Beedrill EX, which means they have to rely on other things, such as Hypnotoxic Laser was an option to get the uh, special, special condition. And Sceptile EX has a standard attack in, I think it's called Sleep Poison. 10 damage, and on a coin flip of heads, it poisons and puts to sleep. 
so they were relying on that, but they just weren't able to stand up to Mega Beedrill EX, because it's just so cool with the combo that I put with the Sceptile with the Nurture and Heal ability. Anyway, congratulations, you've beaten all seven trainers. Record will be saved. We're beating seven trainers in a row, we get this fabulous prize. Oh, so we do get something for beating seven, okay. Let's just jump right back in, go for another Battle Tower Challenge, and let's see how much more difficult things become. So we'll go for the level 50, of course. I remember, this is the reason I got all my Pokemon up to level 100 initially, because I wanted to go for the level 100 challenge. You can't go in with anything less than level 100, because all of your opponents are going to be level 100. So you want to make sure you are on even, uh, an even playing field, even battlefield with the opponents. Just like they did in like Stadium, Stadium 2, and some challenges like that. Alright, so we had a lot of good luck with freezing in the last episode. Will our luck hold out? in this batch of seven trainers. I am Swift, how about you? I can be. I can actually pretty fast when I want to be. All right, Triathlete, Kendra, leading with a Lunatone. So this is that rock type I was kind of concerned about. We could water gun it, but let's be safe. We are double weak to rock with Articuno, but we resist it with Rocky. E. Question is, what can we do to you? Because you levitate, we can't dig you. And you're going to go for a Cosmic Power. Alrighty. So our best move here would be Rock Slide. It is non-resisted. Non-immune. Can't really do too much as you Rock Throw. Right, you can't flinch me with that. Unfortunately, you only do a meager 7 damage. I think we can get you eventually. Of course, the Cosmic Power <coughs> is going to make this a bit of a lengthy encounter. But I was quite happy with how well Mega Beedrill EX did in person. Like, I... I feel I usually have better luck online than I do in real life, but maybe because it's like I don't always have all the cards for the actual deck that I have online. It's online, it's so much easier to get the cards you need. You can trade with people all over the world, and if, for example, that's what I do in a little bit after I'm done recording this. I gotta see if my deck for the first Sun and Moon video for Pokemon TCG has gotten the cards that I need. I set up for some trades last night. This is gonna be a busy day for me, I suppose I could mention, is... I am recording this Sunday morning. You're going to see it Sunday afternoon, of course. Before this, I recorded Monday's episode of Pokemon Moon. After this, i got to check the online Pokemon TCG, see if I have the cards that I need for the deck, and I'm going to record around noontime my time another episode of Pokemon Moon for Tuesday. And later on in the day, I'm going to take a bit of a, a little bit of a breather in the afternoon, sort of make, you know, get some chores taken care of around the house. And then, around 7 o'clock p.m. tonight... I just realized, what day is this going up? Yeah, 7 o'clock p.m. Atlantic time tonight on Sunday. I'm going to be doing some video recordings for Pokemon TCG Online. So I'll put a video up and let you know when I'm doing that. Because if you guys want to join in for some more viewer battles, if I can get three viewer battles, I'll use those on the channel. How do I keep missing? Land the Rock Slide. We're almost out of PP on that. We only get two left. You have Psychic this whole time? Come on. Anyway, I'm going to see if I can set up for some viewer battles, as I said, using the first of the Pokemon GX, if I can get them in the trades. Come on, land the Rock Slide. We need to hit this. Yes! All right. So the first Pokemon is down. It only took, what, eight minutes? No, we're eight minutes into the video, but, of course, there was the entire other fight first. Kadabra! Well, we're going to go for a dig attack on you, but we're unless we can dodge with the Sandstorm, we're not going to survive a hit. We can survive that, actually. But anyway, so I'm going to set up for some viewer battles, hopefully. I guess I can just let you know, the idea for the deck that I have, I thought, what do I want to use? So I want to focus on one Pokemon GX each week, because they're, since there's no break evolutions, they're the next... Okay, first of all, why would you go for a Focus Punch when you know I'm digging? Second of all, why would you even have taught Focus Punch to your Kadabra? for dark types? H have you trained it for physical offense? I highly doubt it. Now, can we survive the folk the, uh, the future site? Does it not work when you're underground? Or did it just miss? I don't know. Anyway, I'm getting sidetracked with what's happening. I can't talk about what's happening outside the video. I mean, this is too interesting. But anyway, yes! Magneton, let's do this. Battle Tower, man, okay, I've complained about you to the heavens and back again, non-stop. You're going to pull this stuff on camera, make me look like a fool for saying how hard you are? 
You're gonna Thunder Wave my Sand Slash? Really? But again, I said yesterday's episode, thanks for watching this video, guys, because you're watching makes it so that the random luck that the Battle Tower normally gets against me is not getting. And I appreciate that. Thanks for being with me for this wild ride we're on. Anyway, here they come. My super power Pokemon. Well, if they are actually super power Pokemon, we have Drill Peck and Peck Attack on our two flying types, so that'll be fine. Of course, super power is the species name for... <sighs> Machamp. Anyway, let's do this this way now. Let's... Water gun's super effective, but let's see if we can get the freeze with Ice Beam. This will hurt, but we have nice defense, and you're not physically offensive. Yeah, we can handle another one of those. If it wasn't critical, we would have been swell. That's what I'm talking about. Let's take a step back in time in this video. In fact, feel free to scroll back about maybe, uh, say about two minutes or so, two or three minutes. Last time, when Articuno was facing off against a Lunatone, I immediately switched into our ground type, right? They went for cosmic power. Do you think there's any logical reason why they would not have done the same thing on this particular encounter? Because as a computer, it knows if I'm switching or if I'm not switching. Because of course, it has to calculate everything and do the animations and stuff and you know make things happen. So it knew that I did not switch. So then why did it choose rocks, rock throw then? And why did it happen to get a critical hit then? Right? Why would it not have cosmic power again? Also, since when is a Lunatone faster than an Articuno? Alright then. That's Battle Tower, everybody. Don't you love it? And now you're just going to go for Psychic. Alright, so this is going to be a quick episode. But this is what I'm talking about. I want to say, first of all, what are you doing? I guess a, a Grass type makes sense and a Resistant Fighting type. But like, this boggles my mind. Alright, we're going to switch out to Zapdos anyhow. But first of all, thank you everybody for watching both today's episode and yesterday's episode. Why would you go for cut? And a critical cut! I can't make this up! Goodbye, Berloon! But thanks for watching these episodes. Your watching has made it so that I've made it this far in Battle Tower. But now I want to say thank you to Battle Tower itself for proving how random it is now. Okay. They've gotten two critical hits, right? They have, I guess you'd say, predicted my non switch. I, you know, predicted. It's a computer. It knows if I'm switching or not. They owe me a Zap Cannon Connect. And here it is. Yes. Might not knock you out. But it does paralyze. Does it matter? It actually does. Alright, so now let's go with the... Hidden Power Fighting. It is neutral. Not a knockout, though. Now, you're not going to get a critical hit. Bring you down. All right. We might not be out just yet. I was expecting the entire the entire episode would be done at that point because, like, with everything that was happening. Well, we might still be done because what do we do against this thing? Give me the zap cannon. Come on, land it, please. Use reflect again. That ain't good. Ah, the episode is done. Ain't no way Rocky can handle a Starly. Even if he was at full HP, Water Pulse destroys him. Let's just play this out the best we can. If we if we can manage to get a Sandstorm off, it'll give us evasiveness. Nope. And that's Battle Tower. You saw the criticals. You saw the fact that it went for Rock Slide, knowing that I left Articuno out there. Like just, what do you say about something like that? Well, it is now time to move on. What do we do now? I'm thinking what I could do next is get my team back. Actually, I can just take the boat. Let's just do that. And I take the boat back to whatever town. Where are we going to go? Let's go... Let's go to Lily Cove this time. We left from Slateport. We'll head to Lily... Uh, I say Lilyport. Go to Lily Cove instead. I'm gonna get my original team back. I'm going to need Majestic for Fly. 
Actually, what I could probably do is just teach Blaze Fly for the time being. It's gonna be minimal layout changes, which, as far as the editing goes, I'm kind of okay with minimal layout changes. So let's go to the Pokemon Center and switch our team back around once again. But yeah, that Battle Tower, isn't that something? And just think, I would have had to go through... How many is that? Like seven batches of seven trainers before even having a chance to get the ribbon. I think that's how it works. Unless it's like... Was it you go through 21? No, they did something different in a later generation. When you go through 20 trainers, the 21st trainer, so the third batch of seven, the last one gives you the ribbon, I think. But then there's a second ribbon you can get for beating 49 or something like that. I don't know. Anyway... We've looked at Battle Tower, and I think that's all I'm going to do for this playthrough as far as Battle Tower goes, because it is just a little bit too frustrating to deal with. Alright, let's grab ourselves Rocky, put him back in the PC. We'll just start loading up the team right now. We got Shelbert here, of course. Articuno can take the rest. Pikachu is next up. We'll switch him out for good old Zapdos. And then, of course, Sprout, Sheldon, Blaze, and Fluffy are coming back. And what could I teach... Do I really need Fire Blast on Blaze? I can probably swap that for Fly. I might just do that. I, always, I can always get the Fire Blast TM once again. I'm pretty sure it's purchasable. Alright, so the team is back on the layout right now. Let me just see. Can I teach you Fly? Well, I know I can, but can I replace something with Fly? So what I suppose I should start doing now is maybe start working towards getting some of the Legendary Encounters. Alright, yeah, only Blaze can learn it. What do we replace? Did I use any PP ups on Fire Blast? If I did, I don't want to really... Nope! Fire Blast is still at 5 PP, so I can just get that back any other time. And now that we're in Gen 3 and onward, I could just go ahead and replace Slash as well. But with Fire Punch and the Charcoal Boost, I think that's probably decent. It's more accurate than the Fire Blast is anyway. So, in order to capture the Reggie Trio, I do need a Relicanth and a Wailord. So I guess... We're going to need Dive, too, aren't we? Can I teach Dive to any of you folks? Hang on, let me see what you guys have to work with. Surf, Ice Beam, Bite, Protect. I could replace Protect, because that's a TM as well. I can just buy one of those. Yeah, Shelbert's going to be our Surfer and Diver for the time being. Let's get that old bag opened up again. Let's grab Dive. Of course, I'm only doing this because... I could get Dive Bomb out of the injury box, but I kind of like the idea of letting Dive Bomb sit out because he has done his part in the playthrough. So Dive, replacing Protect, and we're going to head underwater and look for a Relicanth. Now they're kind of a rare encounter, but hopefully it's not going to take too long to find one of them. Where do I go? The best place probably is... Actually, the best place is Sotopolis. So we're going to head down to there and dive underwater, leave the underwater cave area, and right outside, underwater in the grassy area, is where we can find Relican. Let us see. I'm going to not do this as a speed-up thing. I'm going to record the rest of this episode, trying to see if I can find one on camera. Because what I also have to do is get a Whale Lord. I'm pretty sure those don't appear in the wild. Let me just see. I think I've encountered one before. Let's see if we can find Whale Lord quickly here. No, we haven't seen one yet. Okay. But Whalemer can appear in a lot of different areas. Yeah, quite a few areas, as you can see there. So I can find them on like, the surface of the water, too. I guess I would have to probably catch one and train it up to become Whale Lord. Because, now, does anyone have any information out there? Why exactly do you need Relicanth and Whale Lord? And I'm, I'm hoping I'm right on that, but I'm pretty sure that is how you do it. But why do you need those two particular Pokemon? one in spot number one and one in spot number six in your team. Is there any sort of like, you know, myth or legend about something like that? Like, I don't even know. It always seemed like a weird combination of like, they would request or require you to have those two particular Pokemon in a particular specific order as well to be able to access the underwater, what is it? Is it not Seafloor Cavern. I'm not sure what it's called. But anyway, the underwater area where you can access the, uh, the Reggie Cave, basically, which will unlock the three Reggie brothers in other parts of Hoenn. But as we continue to surf away, what else could I discuss right now? I suppose I can talk a little bit about... I'm going to mention this in the Pokemon Moon episode tomorrow, by which I mean I already have mentioned it because I've already recorded that episode, but I can mention this right here and right now. 
is that there's another online competition coming up at some point for Pokemon Sun and Pokemon Moon. I missed out on the last one because completely honest here, I just lost track of the day and I didn't realize I have not re registered for the Alola Friendly. So I did miss out on that. I didn't get the 50 battle points for participating. <coughs> but the next online competition, as I saw on Serebi.net's Twitter feed, as well as Robert Gosney, one of our regular viewers, has let me know in the comments section. There's a very important prize available for the next online competition. And that prize is a couple of Mega Stones you can't normally access in Sun and Moon. So apparently some of the Mega Stones are locked. You can obtain some in regular gameplay, others you can't. But two particular ones that you can't normally get are going to be the prizes for participating in the next online competition. Those two Mega Stones are the Mawileite and the Beedrillite. And as I was talking about Mega Beedrill being a big, amazing deck of cards that I use, I am a Mega Beedrill trainer through and through, so I gotta get myself that Beedrillite by participating in that online competition. Hopefully they don't make it so that you have to win a certain amount of matches to get the Beedrillite, because I just want to be able to participate and earn the item. I don't think they would ever do that though, they've never done something where <clears throat> you have to win a certain placement to get the, uh, the prize. It's just a participation prize, just, just to jump in and have fun with the game. So I'm looking forward to getting myself Beedrillite, because we... So far in the Moon playthrough, I only have the Alakazite, but I don't have an Alakazam. I actually wonder traded one of those off at one point. And something that I want to eventually do is get into doing some wonder trading. Because I'm finding some items that are trade evolution items. Like, I'm doing a lot of stuff in between episodes of going around the, diff or the different parts of the region, encountering wild Pokemon, and using Critter My Butterfree with the Compound Eyes ability, which increases the chance of wild Pokemon having held items. And I also taught him Thief... I'll get him back his Sleep Powder eventually, but I replaced Sleep Powder with Thief because I want to see if, what all I can steal for held items. And Wild Magby sometimes have Magmarizers to evolve a Magmar into Magmortar when you trade while holding it. And Wild Elekid quite often have Electorizers. So if I ever get a Magmar or an uh, Electabuzz, I can Wonder Trade those off and give it those items. That way whoever gets it in a Wonder Trade is going to get a pretty decent Pokemon evolving the moment they get it through Wonder Trade. And I like doing stuff like that. I've watched some people play through does different kind of Nuzlocks, and one of them is a called a Wonderlock, where whatever you catch on each route, first of all, it's like a standard Nuzlocke where you have to capture the first Pokemon in every route, but the moment you catch it, you Wonder Trade it off, and whatever you get in Wonder Trade in response is what you have to work with on your team for the playthrough. So it'll be cool to mix things up a bit, because a lot of times you'll see that these people doing the Wonderlocks, they'll get... Well, I was watching the King Nappy do the Omega Ruby Wonderlock, I think it was. And he was getting Wurmple and Zigzagoon and Taillo. So just really basic stuff, right? Wingle he got at one point. And very rarely do you ever see them get a super amazing Pokemon. So wouldn't it be something to watch somebody doing a Wonderlock and suddenly someone like myself or someone else out there that's going to be doing this sends over, let's say, a Magmar with the Magmarizer and boom, that player for their video, their playthrough, immediately has a Magmortar or an Electivire, or maybe even like something like a Scizor they could get. That would be pretty cool to do. And eventually, in Sun and Moon, I want to start doing some breeding as well, and maybe do some wonder trading of those Pokemon. I haven't really decided when to start that. I do, actually, now that I think about it, I want to start breeding pretty soon, because I believe when you hatch 20 eggs, I've heard from a couple people, you can then be able to check out the, like a general idea what the IVs of a Pokemon are. It's almost like in Pokemon Go. It tells you like four different variations, like what is it? Average, decent, amazing, stuff like that. They'll just basically put little code words on that to give you an idea. Are they low? Are they high? What are they? So I do want to do some breeding, and I might as well give back to the community as as I'm doing the breeding, because I could breed some maybe unique egg moves, or I don't know if I can really do much in the world of uh, good IVs. I could try, but. I would probably be catching wild Pokemon. In fact, no, I could do that. I could just capture, the, you know, go for the SOS encounters and capture wild Pokemon, wait for, you know, say like 50 turns in or so, and then capture the one that gets called in, because the longer you fight in an SOS battle, in which that is, it's when Pokemon calls for help over and over and over again, which I was initially really annoyed by, but now I really like it. The further you go into the SOS battles, the better the chance of the wild Pokemon that get called in having max IVs and a few stats. So, what is it? You have to use a Destiny Knot, I think, as a held item when breeding to have a better chance to pass those IVs down? I'm not sure. I think there's something on Pokemon.com back during the last World Competition, World Championship, 
They mentioned how to go about getting good IV, so I'll probably just go back and, you know, reread that, make sure I know what I'm doing before I get into the breeding. But I definitely want to breed 20 eggs in Sun and Moon. Well, more than 20, but at least 20, to gain access to see what the IVs are like for all my Pokémon. So, we're at about 25 minutes in, I believe. We're gonna go for about another... Why did I go for Surf? I'm mashing the button. I'm gonna go for three more encounters, and let's see if we find the Relicanth we're looking for. If not, the next episode I'm going to do is a grinding montage to capture the Relicanth, and then what I'll probably do... How do I want to do that? I can capture the Wailord, or Whalemur, and then I'm going to evolve it up. That's encounter number one. I'm not sure how I'll do it. I'll probably... Well, the Whalemur is going to be easy to find and capture, so... Next episode, I'm going to start off with a speed-up montage until I find the Relicanth. I guess just to show you how long it takes me to do it. Well, it should be like the, the second or first encounter I have. But anyway, I will do that, and then we'll capture the Whalemur, and I guess I'll have another grinding montage to evolve the Whalemur up to Whale Lord. Okay, encounter number two, another Clamp Pearl. Alright. And then we'll start going and dealing with the Reggie Trio, I guess. I also have to see, do I want to try and capture... Latias, because we did find out after beating the Pokemon League that a red Pokemon has been seen flying around the region. We didn't have so much luck with the roaming legendaries back in the Johto region, of course. We never, like, after an hour of searching and trying to track down Entei, Raikou, or Suicune, we never encountered one. We met Raikou one time, and I think that was it. We almost knocked it out, too, if I remember. If what I remember is correct. Alright, I lied. We're doing one more encounter before ending this episode off. Come on. I know it. This is it. Give me the Relicant. You just know as soon as I'm done recording, the next episode, the next encounter is going to be a Relicant. Yep, that's it. We're done for today. We accomplished so little in today's episode, but at least we have a plan in mind for what to do in the next episode. Now, since my character's been holding his breath the entire time, let's get up above. Save the game up on the water surface. But with that, we are now done for today and for the weekend. I want to say thanks for checking out today's episode. Sorry not a lot happened, but... Actually, I did get to show off the randomness of Battle Tower, so if nothing else, I got that accomplished. But if you liked today's episode, feel free to leave a like down below and leave a comment letting me know what else would you like to see me do in the Hoenn region. I'm not sure what else there is really left to do. Legendary Encounters... And I think that's all I can think of. I can rebattle the Elite Four. Do they get stronger the second time? Because what I want to do is bring all my Pokémon through to get the ribbon for winning the championship. Oh! Contest. I gotta think of how to get those special berries to make good Pokeblocks, too. That's gonna come a little bit later, though, and I'll explain why once we get to that point. But with all that, we are now done. But again, leave a comment. Let me know if there's anything I am missing in this playthrough as far as trying to do as much of a completionist run as possible. I suppose I'm not even doing that because I had to complete the Pokedex to do that, but no one wants to sit there and watch me do that. And there's so many other generations left to go through in the world of Pokemon. But regardless, if you missed any episodes of Pokemon Sapphire thus far, there's a link, as always, in the description to the entire playlist. You can go check that out. Plus, during the outro, there's going to be some links to some other videos that I have done, as well as a link to subscribe to the channel for some daily Pokemon content. And remember, later on tonight, 7 o'clock p.m. Atlantic time, and again, check the time zones to see what time it is for yourself, I'm going to see if I can get some viewer battles with the first of the Pokemon Sun and Pokemon Moon TCG Online decks for next week's uploads. Uh, I didn't even mention who I'm using right, but I'm going to start with the starter Pokemon. I'm going to see if I can get Decidueye GX as my first Pokemon in the online game. So, hopefully I do get those cards that I need, and if so, prepare for some Decidueye GX viewer battles tonight, 7pm Atlantic Time. And that is Sunday, when I say tonight. I don't know if I mentioned that yet. Sunday, what is today? February 5th, I believe it is? It is. Alright, so if you're watching this on a later day, unfortunately the battles would have already been recorded on Sunday evening, but stay tuned for other videos updating you when I'm going to be doing some viewer battles, and you can jump in on some of those. But with all that, we are now done, as I said. So, we're going to sign off. Professor Chaz is now done. Come on back later today for some viewer battles, recording on the channel, and until then, I'll catch you next time.